Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I bring you guys this video of me um, going over some gear that I have actually. Um, as you know, I like to engage in technology sometimes. So this is going to be me just giving a brief review of my um, Zoom um, Lifetrack L8, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the name. And also the solution that I've come up with to kind of have a portable podcasting uh, box. So as you can see, before us we have this box that's kind of, uh, this is a Plano... Uh, 1404 uh, case. Uh, I bought some at my local Bass Pro Shop because I happen to have one of those. I'm one of the few lucky people to have one local. But you can also get this from probably Walmart or Amazon as well. But this particular case works out just well enough, just well enough for me to um, utilize for my ser for, for my purposes. So in this box, I have everything that I need to kind of have a sort of pseudo turnkey solution to just sit down, open up the box, plug in maybe two or three microphones, and then start podcasting. Um, and the idea is to be portable and also to be flexible and also to be quick to set up. So that was the whole idea. Uh, as you all know, I like to dabble in media creation. Doesn't necessarily mean I do media creation professionally. I just do it kind of for a hobby because I have the expendable income to do so currently. Um, so this is the second solution. The first solution, I'm not even gonna bother showing, uh, it was essentially having uh, a Zoom H5n connected to um, some other stuff, connected to a Zoom H2 as a backup, and then some microphones. It, it worked, but this is a significantly more elegant solution, so we're just gonna show you the elegant one. So once again, this is a Plano uh, 1404 box that we have everything in. And uh, the storage solution, currently I need to work on the foam a little bit, just to let you all know some pointers before we get, dive into it. Uh, the reason why is because we currently have a, you need to like sit on the box to close it situation. So, and these, this is a pretty much a fully plastic case. So these handles, uh, these latches may not last too long if I do that. So I'll, I'll fix that and adjust that in the future. But let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, so the first thing that you'll see is the top foam. So the Plano case is pretty much all plastic and it's hollow plastic. It's kind of, kind of a, I guess, sturdy enough plastic, if you will. Uh, it's, it's pretty cheap, $20, $20 case, uh, works for me. But right here we have the top foam. The reason why I fell out is because there's this, um, my mic cables, uh, just in case I need to adjust or adapt some of my, um, additional audio equipment. There's just a little zipper case, uh, that I got from a friend, uh, who, uh, let me have that. Pretty much any small little pencil case might be able to work for this. And as you can see, I kind of etched out, uh, very, very meticulously etched out. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of the foam so I can actually fit that in without giving too much bulge or too much pressure to the top of the box. Um, so it's not it's not the most elegant solution, but it's a solution. And then also I had this cutout here uh, in the top foam to actually accommodate some of the components in here. And moving on to the main uh, stay of everything, we have inside of here just kind of sort of arranged slightly logically, but a little bit chaos because it's all about the slight chaos in the in the uh, order here. We have um, the Zoom H, the Zoom, sorry, the Zoom Live Track uh, L8 is right here in front of us. Uh, it is battery powered, so that's really cool. Uh, I have it connected to a battery bank, which I'll display or show off here shortly. But for right now, these cables are the cables that I use to connect my audio interfaces. And uh, let's go ahead and just take a tour of what's in the box first. So, first and foremost, we have the Zoom. The Zoom Live Track L8 is right here, front and center. Uh, you can see it, it's right there. Uh, it's a little bit of a hassle to get turned on, but pretty much just lift it up and we can turn it on and get going. See the light turning on right there. Uh, so I'm just gonna turn it off so I don't burn too much battery here. Uh, and it works, it's, it's, it works in that spot. Everything's accessible, I can reach everything, get to my settings and uh, live life, you know? Uh, in addition to that, I have my headphones that I use. Uh, you don't have to use these particular headphones, but these ones are the ones that were just barely, they were just barely able to fit into the box, so I could put them in. Um, any of your headphones are not my favorite. Overhead headphones work pretty fine for me, so these are the ones that are work for me. This is the J-Labs. Uh, and I'll try, I'll try to go through and put all, I'll put links to all the different pieces inside of this box uh, in the description, so feel free to check that out uh, if you're watching this video here. Uh, the next two pieces are the core pieces. These are the two pieces that kind of kicked off the idea of a portable podcast. So um, I, I had already, for some reason, I decided to purchase the Ceremonix, uh, the Ceremonic um, Blink uh, 500 Pros. For some reason, I decided to buy those. I don't know why. It was just on a whim. Uh, I was in Best Buy. I, I paid off some stuff, and I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and put some stuff back on the rotation. So I decided to splurge a little bit and treat myself, if you will. Uh, to these, so these are um, 
these are wireless uh, mics essentially this is a wireless mic system and this is two mics to one transmitter so two uh, two sorry two transmitters to one receiver uh, it's pretty fancy not necessary cheap piece of uh, gear uh, but I had these and then I started watching some videos about the um, about the road version of those and I was kind of kind of waffling back and forth and like you know should I return the ceremonies and get the road ones or should I just get the road ones too and then some of my friends said hey let's do a podcast and it was three of us three or four of us and I was like oh you know what let me just go ahead and buy the the road ones as well because I could uh, you know financially speaking I could plan it out and uh, it worked out that way so in this particular kit I have the road um, go to uh, which is what you see here and then also have the Saramonic uh, Blink 500 Pros. Uh, they have their pros and cons. Some are one's better at something than the other. Um, but I kind of have a mix of microphones. So you see that inside of the um, the Zygenic, Zygenic uh, Go case. So that's in here. Those are the four microphones essentially that I have, or the four primary microphones. Of course, this is a soundboard, so I can put whatever microphones I want. But relative to fitting things inside the box, we have the headphones, and we have the microphones essentially, the microphone systems. And then we have the cables necessary to plug that up. So at the bare minimum, if we take everything else out of the box and just put only these and the headphones and these cables, I can actually do a podcast with four people. You know, it may not be the most comfortable because, you know, you kind of want to have some conveniences like, you know, maybe like a shock mounted mic or maybe some headphones for everybody to use. But this is kind of bare bones, basic, um, the kit that I have here. Um, if anything... If anything, uh, with this particular build, these are absolutely not necessary because there's more than enough space to fit maybe two or three mics in here. So you can fit two or three mics in here with the cables. Uh, the cables might push it over a little bit because those cables are pretty bulky for XLR cables. However, you can comfortably fit maybe two or three mics in here uh, and then have the soundboard and be just fine. So instead of having this um, relatively overkill kit for um, purposes of <laughs> wireless and portability, you can just have standard mics and you know have a blast with it. So those are the main big components inside this box. Once again, those are the main big components inside this box. As far as the little small pieces, uh, we have a USB uh, hub that's right here, a USB hub that's powered. So essentially, the way I have it set up is that I can plug in just this USB hub, and I can make sure that the connections are connected for the charging for the Zygenic uh, Road Go case and the Ceramonic uh, case, and essentially charge everything off of one plug. That was one of the big parts for me is to make it as convenient like i said it's kind of turnkey as possible put it on the table plug it in everything's charging put it on the table plug in your mics plug in your headphones and you're going that's kind of the the goal with everything here so i kind of paid for the convenience uh using these particular mics but this this very simple addition uh maybe 20 25 dollars for the one that i have i don't remember the exact cost of this one uh, i had to salvage it from a different project uh and it works pretty fine literally have everything plugged in for charging the main components and then i can plug that into the wall and charge speaking of charging the main components uh under the zoom which we'll go ahead and move out of the way we have a whole bunch of other stuff uh this is a particular part that i'm still trying to find a better solution to figure out how to store these things but currently this is working okay uh, i'm not i'm not too happy about having you know equipment that costs you know actual dollars uh have a giant piece of equipment that costs actual dollars on top of it doesn't seem like the most secure thing ever uh, however it's currently working for me and uh, i'll adjust and adapt as i go along so in here we see a mess of cables and we see a mess of components uh in here we have two small rig two small rig uh um cold shoe mounts for handles so you can use those interview mics these are for the roads so that way the roads can actually be placed on shock mounts because my fellow podcasting people, uh, if they don't have their own microphone, uh, they have this as an option to either handhold or to put into a shock mount, which is in a different box, which I'll show towards the end. And then I also have the, um, the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro uh, handle, which is essentially a battery plus a microphone hand, um, handheld device. Uh, it can help charge the Ceramonic uh, transmitter and also use it as a microphone. Not necessary at all. Overpriced, in my personal opinion. If I had to go back, I would not have purchased this and just purchased four of these. Because I could have purchased two of these for the price of one of these, effectively. So, that's just, just my <laughs> my personal take, you know. Take it with a grain of salt. This video is obviously not sponsored by any of the people that are in this box. So, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the uh, honest opinions. And even if it was sponsored, I would still give you my honest opinions. 
Uh, we have some various cabling down here. These are just a USB-C. I was going to keep it all to the side over here. Let's get this somewhat organized so we don't have too much of a mess to put back in the box. And uh, then over here we have a power bank. So the cool thing about the Zoom uh, live track is that it can be powered for power bank. So currently it's, it's basically plugged right into this power bank. This power bank is what's plugged into the power strip. It's plugged into the, oh, sorry, the, um, the USB hub here. And the USB hub, essentially when I plug it into the wall, it charges the power bank. Uh, the only caveat with this particular setup is that when I turn on the Zoom uh, live track, because this auto sleeps, the power bank auto sleeps, when I turn on the live track, um, I have to kind of reach in here awkwardly and find the little small button on the side here to turn this on. And once, it turn, once it's turned on, it's giving power to the Zoom. Therefore, the Zoom is not using the four AA batteries that I have inside of it, which is pretty good because the Zoom chews through some AA batteries. Um, I left it on for about an hour and a half, um, just kind of passively recording some stuff, and boy, <laughs> lost a whole line of battery in that one. Now all the batteries didn't run out. Um, I don't know what the exact battery life is on this. I don't recall on top of my head. I just remember seeing the battery indicator on this go from three to two after just about maybe an hour, hour and a half of recording, and that, that kind of scared me. So power bank, absolute, necess uh, absolute necessity to save on batteries and also to make sure that I have enough juice to make it through whatever podcast we might do, whether it's a long or short one, or if I'm just going out in the field and doing some recording for some friends, which I do occasionally. Um, I have some nice, reliable sound equipment with some nice, reliable power. Going over the rest of the things in the box, we have this mess of cables down here, which is something I need to figure out a better solution for. But these are just uh, two lavalier mics that came with the ceremonics and some headphones that came with, uh, I think this came with my cell phone. Uh, I, I don't recall where these headphones came from, but um, basically two lavalier mics that I can use um, for some, some various things. Uh, if I need to mic up somebody directly, or if my podcast uh, fellow podcast peoples would like to be mic'd up, we can do that. And then we also have the headphones. Uh, just in case somebody doesn't have their headphones, we can plug them in, get them going. Uh, we have another set of headphones that came with one of the MP3 players that we're going to talk about here right now. And we have two MP3 players inside of here. The reason why we have the MP3 players is primarily because I like the idea of having some options for background music. And, uh, you know, I, I, a huge shout out to, huge shout out to, um, I think it's, uh, oh, I gotta look it up. Huge, huge shout out to Incompetech or in Incompetech. I, I never know how to pronounce that, but basically royalty free music. Um, I'm always a fan of that. I've been using that for years, years in my YouTube videos. Uh, and then YouTube came out with its own video stuff. So, um, we'll get the proper shout outs here in a second. Wow. Kevin, Kevin McLeod. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kevin McLeod. There you go. Huge shout out to Kevin McLeod uh, from Incomptech. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. If not, just check the description. It'll be there. Uh, has a lot of royalty free music. Um, I did go ahead and, you know, pay, pay the fee so I can go ahead and just download all of the things at once. So I have all of the Kevin McLeod music on here. I also have the Cowboy Bebop um, OST soundtracks, which I won't use in the podcast, of course. But I just love the Cowboy Bebop OSTs. Go check it out. Especially, you know, a lot of hype around the Cowboy Bebop coming on Netflix. Really excited about that. But that's not this video. Let's keep moving. So these are two different uh, MP3 players. Uh, one is the SanDisk. The SanDisk Clip uh, Sport. Not the Pro, unfortunately. I didn't get the Pro. And the other one is... Uh, the other one just came in today. Uh, and so, so this is the SanDisk Clip Pro. Or sorry, SanDisk Clip Sport. Not the pro one. And then this this particular one is uh oh yeah, the the Tim the Tim Cook. <laughs> the the Tim Koo. Probably the Tim Koo. The Tim Koo Q three E digital player. Uh the reason why I have two different ones is because I originally purchased this one. I wasn't too happy with the interface. Uh although now that I have this one, which I, I'm a little bit more happy about the interface, um, this one would have been much more than sufficient. Uh, just kind of one of those FOMO moments, fear of missing out moments. Uh, but this particular MP3 player is very competent. Uh, it will be able to play the music that I need to play. Uh, it can do things in the background. It's very small, uh, very portable, and it has 16 gigs on it, which is more than enough to hold all the tracks that I have downloaded from, from uh, Incontech. Uh, so I can have one here in the background. And as you can see, it's playing some Cowboy Bebop right now. Um, but that's a little small recorder. And the idea is that we can have background music playing while we're doing a podcast for various things. 
And then this one, of course, is just the bigger brother of this one. Uh, one of the cool things about this particular one, too, is that this does have a calendar on it. Uh, it doesn't have Android. I mean, it runs a very stripped down version of Android uh, by the looks of it. Um, I'm assuming it's some form, some flavor of Android. I can probably get in and do some customizing and hacking on it, but I'm, I'm really not that determined. <laughs> I'm really not that determined to, to dig into this particular device because at that point, I'm just going to use one of my old cell phones uh, to play the music, to be honest. Uh, but this was like a little $50 venture. This is like maybe a, a $40 venture. It, it wasn't too much as far as investments. If you're going to go for this for yourself, I would recommend getting one of the SanDisk uh, clips. Uh, if you are going to get one of the SanDisk, I would recommend the SanDisk uh, clip. I think that's the name of it. The SanDisk Clip Jam, I think it's the name of it. Uh, it has uh, expandable expandable storage, so you can put in a micro SD card, which is very useful because this particular device, thankfully, has 16 gigs, which is just barely enough to hold the 11 gigs worth of music that I want to put on there. And the Clip Jam uh, one that I opted not to get, that one has only 8 gigs on store on board storage, uh, but you can put in a micro SD card. So for this particular one, there's no micro SD card storage or expandability. So that kind of sucks, but it does exactly what I need to do. Uh, this one, as I mentioned before, is cool because it has a calendar. So I can kind of use it to calendar out some things podcast wise. It can connect to the internet. It just doesn't do anything when connected to the internet. So you can't sync your calendars. I can't put my Google calendars on that. If I could, it will take this one over the top. But uh, this is not really a review specifically on these particular devices. Um, however, if it was, I'd recommend this one for this particular purpose because it's small, compact, you can fit in a corner, and it works pretty fine. This one was just a little overkill, to be honest. So yeah, so I have two of these MP3 players. I'm probably going to use just one, uh, maybe just do a calendar thing or two on this one, and then use this one primarily for the music. Uh, although, organizing music is a little bit easier on this one, so we'll see. As you can see, I'm still a little undecided on which one I want to keep in the box. This one takes up less space, though. This one takes up less space. But this one has USB-C, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, moving on to the rest of the things. We have uh, some various audio cables over here. These are just, um, just some normal stereo cables. Uh, this, we have just a USB Type-C cable, an extra one. Uh, we have a plug extender because the power brick for this is a pretty huge. Uh, and one of the issues I ran into was plugging in this. Sorry, plugging in uh, this in addition to other things that had my power strip. So... I decided to just throw this in the box because it could fit. It was there. I just put it at the bottom of the bag and it's fine. And then lastly down here is one of the other big things to talk about. So we have an excessive amount of accessories. <laughs> an excessive amount of accessories that we really don't need. But I got for the purpose of convenience because once again, my fellow podcast mates, uh, if they would like to have some convenience, I would like to make sure we have convenience in the box. So this is completely over uh, overkill. But these are just uh, Bluetooth um, devices. Uh, there's two Bluetooth, sorry, there's three Bluetooth out devices. So these can send Bluetooth out so they can connect to Bluetooth headphones and people can listen to things wirelessly if they want to do that. Um, you know, me, I'd rather be wired up directly, but that's their preference. And then we have uh, two Bluetooth receivers. Uh, these, unnecessary, <laughs> completely and utterly unnecessary. Uh, however, uh, for the purpose of the casuality of the podcast that we're, that we're going to be doing, because uh, we're just starting out on our journey here, me and my fellow podcast peoples, um, this is an option that I would like for them to have. So if they want to have their own Bluetooth inputs, uh, they can with the Bluetooth mic. Um, probably won't be the best of quality. And then these are Bluetooth outs. So if they want to have Bluetooth headphones, they can have the Bluetooth headphones. Saves a little bit on my space, so I'm okay with that. Um, and then also... Uh, the other option too is that this particular device, this particular MP3 player has Bluetooth, this particular one does not. So I could theoretically connect this particular um, MP3 player into Bluetooth on this, but there is a limitation that we'll talk about when we get back to the um, back to the Zoom recorder uh, here shortly. So that's effectively what's in the box. Essentially all of these things were in the box, uh, kind of stored away, kind of you know crammed in there and tucked, tucked away so they can just be there. For, um, for presents. Um, additionally, inside of this little bag, I have an extra audio cable and then I have the extra um, dead cats in there for the Saramonic mics and the extra one that comes with the Rode Go 2s, the Rode Wireless Go 2. So let me put all this back up so we can uh, get our box tidy up a little bit and get back to talking about the main recorder. 
So the purpose of this particular video is more so to give a tour of what's in the box. Um, I'm not necessarily trying to give a full, full-fledged review of the Zoom record, the Zoom live track recorder. Um, if you want my full-fledged review of that, it's essentially I love it. It's great. Uh, it's perfect. It's it's a cool it's a cool addition to my existing Zoom products. I have a Zoom H5 in. I have a Zoom H2 in, and now I have a Zoom live track L8. So I was tempted to buy a L12, but the L12, I don't, if I understand correctly, the L12, you cannot power, uh, well, you can power it maybe from a power bank, but it requires more juice. And I don't think, I, I do not think it has built-in batteries, but don't quote me on that. All right, so let's put this back together. So we can talk about the um, live track recorder, and then uh, we'll talk about the other bag, and then we'll close out the video from there. So, as you can see, I kind of just do a, a little bit of a lasagna in the bag. Just kind of put a little bit of layer here, you know, just sprinkle a little bit of cable there, put a little bit of a headphone over there, and eventually it all goes back together. Uh, essentially, this is a very um, haphazard design because I'm still working on ordering it, uh, putting it all together, I mean, as far as what I have in the box. Um, I think I will maybe pull out some of this foam here. So I can actually put these handles to the side. So that way it's not as much pressure on the zoom because I'd rather not have things on the back of the zoom. Uh, and also theoretically, theoretically, these things being down here, it's a little bit bad of it, a little bit of a bad idea. But these particular devices, I mean, the most expensive one cost about 30, sorry, $40. I mean, <laughs> yes, I don't want my investment to be ruined. But also, you know, five times $20, five times, sorry, four, it's, it's a worthwhile risk to fit it on the box. I'm paying for the portability is what I'm saying. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't damage my equipment though. Anyway, continuing on with the placement things. So the zoom essentially just sits right on top of all this, which yes, I know a big cringe moment, but this is the result of the foam. <laughs> I need to get the foam. Uh, shave down a little bit so I can have a layer of protection between the zoom and the rest of the equipment. Uh, and then, of course, the ceremonics they go here. The um, road go goes here, kind of over some cables there. And just to give you an idea of what the charging idea is, or the charging uh, configuration is, essentially we have some USB C um, L brackets there, and those connecting to those when I'm ready to charge things up. And then I just take this plug and plug it in. Um, I can theoretically plug in um, four additional things into this power strip so I can actually get uh, power out to the MP3 player, uh, to the other MP3 player. I can get power out to other things if I need to. Uh, it gives me a lot of flexibility. So I really, I really do appreciate the flexibility it gives um, having just a simple power strip. Like if anything, I'm just kind of making this entire video to show that it could all fit in one box and there's a USB power strip. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of the entire purpose of this entire video, just to show off those particular qualities, uh, because I feel like those particular qualities are very noteworthy. All right, we got some spare cables. I'm just gonna just gonna do a little quick toss toss a few cables into the corner. Oh 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 oh, sorry sorry, I almost forgot. Ah, this is a very important piece of equipment. So so this is the la the other piece of equipment I forgot to talk about. Um, I happen to have one of these because of the last setup I had. I had an issue to where the Zoom H5, the Zoom H5, I can get it with these particular microphones. I can get the Zoom H5 to record all four tracks on separate on separate um, channels. So the Zoom H5, as you know, has uh, essentially four tracks that I can record. Uh, and that is the XY and then the uh, line in the line two, sorry, line, in, line one and line two, which those are XLR, um, basically these kind of jacks, so combination jacks of XLR and quarter inch quarter inch yeah quarter inch so with that um i was able to get the splits set up um, using these specific cables well actually not these specific cables but using one of these cables and then one of these cables which these cables are the eighth inch to um two mono uh quarter inch so i was able to use the eighth inch to eighth inch on the top cardioid on the zoom h5 which i don't have handy so i can't show you while i'm talking about it but uh, and I was also I was able to use the bottom, the bottom of the Zoom H5 to plug in the monos, the monos, so I can take the stereo signal coming out from one of these particular uh, mic systems because they can they can send one receiver to one channel, so left, and one receiver to the right channel, so one to left, one to right, so you can separate the audio. 
and I had all four channels recording in. But the issue that I had, uh, the reason I'm talking about that is because, uh, the reason the issue that I had was that you had some audio on left and some audio on right, so there was no merge signal. Is what I'm saying. So to fix that, Ceremonic actually makes this particular device, which is a really cool one. I'm happy I found it. Is the AX1 audio mixer. Uh, it is a powerless mixer uh, it, that does affect the amount of signal that you get coming through, which kind of kind of sucks. But it's essentially uh, an, an attenuator uh, for left and right. It's a very small mix, mixer. Um, sorry, it has attenuators, I should say. And uh, you can change the signal that it receives from mono, sorry, from stereo to mono, which is perfect for my case because in the previous setup, once again, in the previous setup that I had, um, I wanted all four channels to record on the Zoom H5 in, and then I wanted the signal that people actually heard or people would potentially listen to, I wanted that to be one merged track. So I can have the convenience to be able to adjust audio levels um, in post if I needed to. And then also if we did a live show, we can have people hear the actual audio as it is without having to hear one person on one side, one person on the other side. So this was perfect. Uh, and then what I did to deal with the gain situation, because the audio coming through was a lot lower than what was being recorded, is um, I connected this into a Zoom H2 in, which I happened to have sit sitting around. So I had a Zoom H2 in, and I used the gain on that if I needed to, to increase the volume a little bit uh, without adding too much noise. It added noise. It wasn't great, but it worked. So that way I had the primary recording with the four separate tracks, and then I had a backup recorder essentially on the Zoom H2 in with the final results. Uh, and then I found out about this particular device. <laughs> this device essentially did all of that <laughs> in one device. And it's also cheaper. And I was very sad. <laughs> but it's okay. I have it now. It's here. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to the Ceremonic, uh, the Ceremonic AX1. It was a lifesaver back when I had the other build. I keep it in this box just in case I need it. Just in case I need it. All right. So going back into talking about the Zoom... Uh, live track. So the Zoom live track, there's many, 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 many videos on the YouTubes, on the internet, uh, that talk about the Zoom live track. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to rehash all the technical information that you can get from them. Um, I will talk about it just from a purely, I'm using this as a noob, uh, somebody who's an enthusiastic or a enthusiast at best when it comes to doing uh, podcast things or audio based things. So I can't talk about which, uh, which bit rates the best. I can't talk about what impedance makes sense or what the mixing settings should be, so on and so forth but I can at least speak to the user experience. So I like, I enjoy tinkering with things, hence the entire build of this box. Uh, and I like the ability, or I like the fact that I get to tinker with this entire Zoom uh, kit to see how it works, to get, uh, get to know the quirks, to get to know the setup. As you can see here, you know, <laughs> I don't even have quarter inch headphones. I have the converters inside of here, but I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot since using this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out that I don't think uh, many other people pointed out, mainly because most people will be aware of this, but you know, consumer be aware, is that um, all these channels are mono. So these particular six channels are mono. And uh, when I was using my microphone setup, my microphone setup, it was relatively straightforward because these cables will plug in. Uh, one mic will be on channel left, one mic will be on channel right. And I didn't have to worry about it too much because the transmitter from these particular devices, from the, uh, the Rode Go 2 and the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro, um, they would send one channel to the left, one channel to the right. They have the ability to do that. So the reason why I'm mentioning this is because these are mono. These are mono. <laughs> I want to repeat, these are mono. Uh, the reason why that was an issue is because I decided to play around with the MP3 players that I had, which is, let's, let's use this guy since he's already out. And I plugged in this straight from this to a quarter inch and I could only hear one half of the song. And yes, I understand in hindsight, it's very simple and straightforward to figure out what was going on because it's in mono. So it's only going to take the left channel. It's in mono. It's only going to take the right channel, <laughs> but it took me a while to figure it out. So the fix that I have for that, uh, and once again, I'm highlighting this because it was something that caused me some heartache. Uh, so you don't have to go through it. Um, is that I was able to use the ceremonic to take the audio that was from here which is stereo uh, to put into the connector here and then send it out mono so it can go inside the levels. So it can go inside of the, um, the input. Uh, it's a little bit of a convoluted setup. I'm a little frustrated <laughs> for some of the songs that I liked uh, that that happened. I think most, almost all the songs that, um, almost all the songs that were, that were coming from uh, Kevin, Kevin McLeod, uh, the, the free, the royalty free music just as long as you give attribution. Most of those songs, uh, they pretty much play mono or they play the same thing on left, the same play, same thing. Nah, they play the same thing on left that they play on the right. 
so it's not that big of a deal but for some of the particular songs that i was interested in uh there was a left track there was a right track and it caused issues so i just want to highlight that these are mono pretty straightforward it's a mixer it's not expecting anything other than that it's <laughs> just just buyer beware buyer beware another thing to mention too is that with the zoom uh, live track and you'll see this in many other videos people will talk about it all the time there's a mix minus that's over here which is really 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 nice um, the way I currently use this particular setup uh, especially in our testing with podcasting so I haven't recorded a full podcast yet but in our test podcast that we did uh, my friends and I uh, is that I plugged in the music to here where it has a mix minus it's a little bit of a waste of a port we're not gonna be doing too many interviews so I guess it's not that big of a deal for us um, however, this allowed me to get the entire stereo signal into the recorder. Uh, it just cost me this entire channel because you have to switch this channel over to the headphone side. So you end up losing the soundboard, the three buttons on the soundboard, but you get the audio in. It's, it's more than enough for me. Uh, like I said, we have a three person podcast. So and potentially four people, four person podcast every once in a while. So we have more than enough inputs to deal with all this. For my purposes, this is perfectly fine. I'm okay with the concession of losing the um the ability to have the phone calls come in uh, maybe i can make some adjustments later we'll see we'll see all right so that's pretty much this box in a nutshell i'm going to go ahead and just shove this all to the side so we can talk about the other box uh, the other box is not quite a box it's more like a lunch bag actually it's exactly a lunch bag <laughs> it's mainly because i couldn't find a reasonable way to store the shock mounts in the stands so this is this little lunch bag that i had for for a while uh inside of it it's gonna have some emergency pieces and we also have a nice manfrotto stand we have a shock mount uh that's, look, that's sitting right here we have another shock mount so we have enough space for two shock mounts uh for me relative to the podcast that we'll do or that i'll be doing for my purposes i don't necessarily want a shock mount uh mic i'm just gonna have myself mic'd up and just kind of occasionally throw in some commentary here or there uh, but as you can see we have everything we need to do a podcast and of course if you can get a bigger lunch box you can get a bigger bigger amount of things the main takeaway with all this though is that with this current setup i'm pretty satisfied with the portability with the portability that was uh that's kind of already built into the zoom recorder and to have the ability to just take an entire audio set to take an entire audio set and just kind of confidently take it with you uh, so you can record a show, record some um, audio. Um, I can do, I can do just about anything with this. To be honest, like it doesn't have to be just podcasts. My current goal is podcasts, but I can do, um, I guess, a concert if I really wanted to. I can do some sound audio for a, a TV show, low, uh, maybe somebody who has a little production thing, a local thing. Uh, it gives me a lot of flexibility. And then, of course, if you want to get a bigger case, go for it. This is honestly, in my in my opinion. The fact that this has batteries in it and the fact that it gives you so much flexibility and the fact that you can power it by a power bank tells me that this needs to be put in a box. This needs to be put in a box so you can actually have some kind of uh, extra functionality with it. So you can kind of have a one-two punch, if you will, uh, with your particular setup. So this is how I how I use it in particular. Uh, it's not the prettiest. <laughs> it's not the prettiest of boxes. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of foam up here some foam up here that's kind of shaved off because I couldn't fit everything quite uh, like it was. I need to do some adjustments with how much foam is back here, so on and so forth. There's, there's, a, there's a whole lot of issues with this box. But the main thing is that the Zoom the Zoom live track is the star of the show here. The secondary star of the shows are definitely the wireless mics coming from Ceremonic and from Rode. Uh, the setup works phenomenally for our test run that we did so far, and eventually we'll have episodes out. Uh, I'm, not necessarily gonna, I'm not necessarily going to let you all know <laughs> the name of the podcast because we still have to actually fully commit and get some episodes out. Uh, but maybe one day, maybe one day I'll let you all know, finally, uh, what the name of the podcast is. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's nothing much else to talk about in this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try my best to answer them. But just know that I'm, at best, a... A, an enthusiast <laughs> when it comes to this kind of stuff so I, I don't know if i'll be able to give you super details about impedance and all this stuff uh the microphones that we can use or one thing i can say from watching other people talk about this particular device is that the 45 volts that's here uh it's all or nothing on this particular model that does kind of suck because just in case one of my podcast people one of my, my fellow podcast uh, uh people wants to use their own powered mic um i might have to do an external power solution uh, which I have, I have a external power solution for 
uh, XLR mics. The issue is that it's going to add more to my kit. And it means I'm going to have to carry some more stuff with me. That's going to be a little inconvenient. So I'm going to try to convince them to use the mics that we have. However, if they decide not to, then that's on, you know, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. This is a collaborative effort. <laughs> this is a collaborative effort here. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. This is one of the other scary parts is having this metal thing scratch all over, scratch all over my equipment. It's occupational hazard though. It's occupational hazard. Then we go ahead and close it on up. And once again, this is one of those, you kind of have to sit on the suitcase to close it situations. And I need to figure out uh, how much foam I need to remove from the bottom section. Cause the bottom section has a little bit of foam, has a little bit of give down there. Oh, actually, I know what's going on. It's definitely got to unplug those so I don't mess up any cables, especially that one. There we go. And once again, not the most elegant solution in the world. Uh, definitely if you go for a bigger case, you'll have way more space to utilize and you'll be able to do this without too much uh, struggle. Uh, but for the look of everything, I mean, you can get a more professional build for sure. But for the look of everything, I mean, the fact that it fits all in one spot, it's, it's a box that I can literally just pick up and say, I can pick this up and know I have everything I need to do a podcast. Now, of course, with this situation, the fact that I have all of these stands and stuff in a different bag, that kind of sucks. Uh, if I could fit it all in one box, I could. Maybe I'll get a bigger box, uh, a little bit more sturdy box to do it in, but we'll see. Anyway, all right. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.